everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Mutter. It's common-mutter.com on the internet. And today, we're gonna be diving into this Honda CB550 engine to do an engine inspection. In this situation, uh, the engine blew up on a bike. We had to get another engine for it, but we wanna make sure the engine that's going in the bike is in good shape and ready to go in and be run. So the reason we're doing an engine inspection is because on our, our shop, Honda CB550, we ended up cooking part of the engine on a road trip last year. And uh, actually this is the crankshaft from it. Uh, long story short, we sprung an oil leak on the engine and we ended up cooking one of the bearing journals here on the crankshaft. And we had to rebuild the engine from the ground up, which you're gonna be doing in a different series of videos. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, to keep the bike going, we rounded up this uh, Junkyard Special 550 engine here to toss back in the bike so we can keep riding it. And I know a lot of people are in a situation where maybe they're trying to rebuild their engine or you know they cooked an engine and they have to get another engine for their bike. But because all of this stuff is gonna be used and it can be in varying states of you know good shape or bad shape, uh, you wanna make sure the engine's in tip top shape before putting it in the bike. So that's much easier to do on the bench now before you actually throw it in the bike and find out, oh, hey, this thing broke. I got to pull the engine back out. So we're going to go through an inspection of a series of things in this engine to make sure it's ready to go into the bike. And if we have to make the repair, we're going to do it now. While we're doing this on the 550, the same concepts are going to apply to you know, 360, 450, uh, 350. Uh, granted, the engines look different, but we're going to be doing the same types of inspections on different things in the motor. So this at least will be a, a checklist uh, to follow, at least some guidelines to follow of what you're going to get into with the motor versus an actual step-by-step -step on how to, uh, to do it on a per motor basis. All right, so the first thing we probably should do on this engine or any old engine is to clean the engine, at least externally. It's gonna make anything we have to do to the engine moving forward a lot easier to do. Uh, and I was just thinking about this earlier, how we really should have taken this thing, sprayed it down with degreaser and gone to the coin op car wash and given it a spray down. Uh, in doing so, we would have plugged all the exhaust passages and all the intake ports with some rags to keep the water out of it. But since we're already here shooting the video, uh, we're gonna do the best clean we can uh, just right here on the bench. So uh, do yourself a favor, go to the coin car wash and uh, give your engine a, uh, a clean. So we're gonna see if the engine actually turns over here. I got a 23 millimeter uh, socket. Uh, engine rotation is gonna be from this side clockwise and the other side counterclockwise, but it always kind of rotates uh, forward. So that's good. Uh-oh. Uh Back that off a little bit. It'll go there. And then stops, and then it goes there. And it stops, and it's giving me resistance. So something is uh, binding up. I don't know what. Uh, so I guess we're gonna have to find out what is binding on this. Maybe it's the starter. Maybe there's rust in the cylinder, and we're hitting some some rust. Uh, maybe there's a bent valve. I don't know. So uh, one, one thing to keep in mind is your results might vary with your engine. That's why we're doing the inspection here. You didn't know exactly what we're gonna get. I'm gonna remove the four spark plugs on um, the 550 motor. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, PB blaster. I'm gonna kind of spray it around the spark plugs. Maybe help, especially once they crack loose. Right there. Okay. I'll let that sit for a few minutes. Take the spark plugs out. We have this right here. This is our part number 9030. Uh, this is a deep wall 18 millimeter spark plug socket, which if you have a 500K or 550, you need this. So it goes way deep in there to get to the spark plug. I'm gonna use my little breaker bar to pop it loose. Look at that, way down there. That's good. All 
Ew, that one came out. Ew, look at that. That tells me there might be moisture inside the cylinder here, a little bit of rust and corrosion. More uh, more PB blaster, and you're gonna definitely get into this. I'm just gonna spray it with a spark plug hole. All the other ones look great. So, this is uh, not so promising. I'm gonna let that sit for a little while, and then we'll try turning the motor over and see what happens. So the PB blaster's been sitting inside the motor here for a little bit, uh, soaking, and uh, that spark plug looked pretty bad, meaning there was moisture in the cylinder. Uh, gonna be this, this cylinder right here on this side. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the motor over, and our goal right now is to see if we can get the whole motor to, to rotate. What I suspect has happened is we got some rust on in the cylinder wall, maybe on one of the valves, and uh, hopefully we can uh, maybe break it free and get the motor to turn all the way over. Right there. Try to give it a little bit of, oh yeah. Feels crunchy, I can feel it. Oh, crunchy. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. So it was it was mildly stuck. So there's probably a lot of you are thinking, well, that means the engine needs to be torn down and rebuilt. Uh, remember, the goal of, of this project right here is to get an engine running and put it in the bike and get the bike going again while we rebuild another motor. So uh, this cylinder might have a little bit of low compression on it. It might drink a little bit of oil, but the fact that it broke loose and we can turn the motor over is a good thing. So we're going to run it and put a couple hundred miles on it and then make a determination of how bad it is. Um, a lot of times on, in a situation like this, you can actually just run the motor and get some more life out of it. Maybe this cylinder doesn't perform 100%, maybe it performs 80% of its capability, but the engine still might have another 10, 15,000 miles in it before it actually needs a full tear down. So uh, we're not looking for more work that we need to do here. And that's a good sign that we'll get the turnover. We'll put some more PB Blaster in there keep letting it soak and um, hopefully you know, the engine shouldn't be a problem. So we got we got real lucky on that one, but it definitely was feeling a little, a little crunchy. You guys don't know how excited I am that the motor actually is turning over and we didn't have to do a tear down on the motor because I really didn't want to do that. Uh, so uh, the next step on this process that I want to do is to actually inspect the camshaft of the motor. Uh, I should do it in all these engines, whether it's the fours or the twins because the, the cam, the rockers, and all the valve train stuff up here is really kind of the weakest part of the Honda engines. Uh, they tend to get chewed up because of lack of oil or bad clearance adjustments. So we're gonna take off this whole valve cover here and actually look at the camshaft and everything checks out. We'll uh, put the cover back on, set the valves, and then move to the lower part of the engine. So I'm gonna take this cover off. Uh, I'm gonna take off all of the uh, the valve covers too, or at least break them loose. And it's gonna be easier to do while it's on the engine versus on the bench. Um, 17 millimeter and I'm using a six point socket. So it grabs really well on my breaker bar because these things tend to be stuck. There we go. I'll take it off all the way. I just want to break it loose. A lot of people over tighten these covers. They shouldn't be that tight. All right, all those guys are loose. We got two JS Phillips here. I'm just gonna try my, my regular screwdriver to see if I can pop them loose. Oh, that, that one was super loose. Uh, something I like to do is I'll either keep the fasteners with the, the assembly. Um, you can either leave them in there or you can take a piece of cardboard and like draw a picture of this and put the bolts in it so it helps you remember what bolt was where. Breather cover thing is off. Got a gasket right here. I'm gonna go ahead and change that gasket out with a fresh one. Have I told you all about the impact driver? All right, so if you don't have one of these, get one, because you need it for doing jobs like this to break loose all these stubborn screws. Um, we have one on the website, part number is 9018. Uh, it should be part of your toolbox. It even comes with instructions, look at that. So the key to using this is to not only be putting uh, pressure down on the impact driver, but also to be twisting it counterclockwise at the same time. 
and all this thing does is, is pop, pop these fasteners loose. So I'm holding it really firm and just like that. Good hard crack that you want to hear. And that screw is now broken loose. And lift it off. There is our rocker arms and valve cover and uh, we'll clean this up and take a look at everything but just the initial glance the rockers all look pretty good. So uh, got the top end all cleaned up while we're just off camera for a little bit and the whole point of this operation was just to make sure that the camshaft, so the lobes of the camshaft are in good shape and not torn up, as well as a visual inspection to see if there's anything else that's weird uh, in the, the top end of the engine. We had done the, uh, cleaned out the, the, the valve cover and the rocker arms, and they all look like they're in great shape as well. So we're just gonna put it back together and button it up. Uh, another great news was there was oil in the top of the head here. And where the camshaft lobes are, they're, these are like little wells where oil is supposed to collect and the lobes dip in there. And they actually had a motor oil in them. So that's good. I mopped it out because it's old oil and we're gonna put some fresh oil in there and uh, start putting this back together. But overall, everything looks like it's in great shape. Uh, this would be an opportunity if your camshaft was torn up or the rockers were torn up to take it out and then have it done for service. But we're in good shape here. We're gonna go back together. So I mentioned before that the, the valve train, meaning the, the cam, the rockers, the cam chain, all the stuff up here on the top of the engine is the weakest part of all the Honda engines. And it's because of one, the metallurgy, how it was made, and two, um, it gets the oil last. It's the very last place that oil goes to. So uh, when you have a weak part, getting lubrication last in the sequence, it's not good. So we're, since we're going back together with this, we're gonna be using some engine assembly lube right here. I'm using this. You know, I use a couple different brands, they're all good. I'll use this one because it's um, red. It's gonna be very easy to see on the uh, camera here. And all assembly lube is, is kind of like a sticky tacky grease to help keep parts lubricated until the oil gets there. So um, I'm just gonna take this and start applying it to the individual cam lobes right here. Cool, happy with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the motor to a position for where the cam lobes are kind of all facing. It's not gonna all face down, but the least amount of them are gonna be poking up. And the reason I'm gonna do that is when we put the valve cover back on, we wanna be not fighting against the valve springs with the rocker arms. We got a new gasket for the, the valve cover. Okay, we're gonna start uh, getting this all thing torqued back down. I'm gonna replace the Phillips head screws with some Allen head screws. But I'm gonna put in the first uh, four bolts here in the middle, which were, which were unique. I'm gonna be using some uh, anti-seize compound, my favorite stuff here, not a lot of it. Take my bolts here, Just get a little bit of it on the threads. Take that, drop them in. All right, so um, got all the uh, the bolts in. Uh, they're all M6 bolts here, so the, the torque values on them are gonna be between about seven to nine foot-pounds on average across the board. I'm just gonna do it by hand uh, for this particular motor only because um, I'm used to how it feels. If you're not sure, use a torque wrench. And 
In this engine, we're gonna be working like a crisscross pattern out from the center. If you're not sure, uh, a lot of the service manuals do have a tightening pattern guide depending on your engine configuration. So double check your service manual to see what's in there or not. On this one, again, I'm just gonna work my way like in the middle and then go bigger and then go bigger all the way to the finishing at the ends out here. So. Sixteen. Seventeen. Great. That's good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, the other breather cover on right here and tighten down the six bolts. All right, new gaskets in place. A little bit of grease to help hold it. Put that breather cover right back on. Start. All right, that's in. Uh, the very last thing to do before we're, we can move to the bottom side of the motor is to uh, adjust the valves right here. And they're all super loose right now. It's easy to do when the motor's in this state. So um, take your feeler gauges out, adjust the valves, and then put your valve covers back on. I do have new O-rings. The valve covers I'm gonna put in place. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll work our way uh, down to the bottom end and take a look at some stuff on the bottom side. but. Uh, so far, so good. As far as the top end goes, I'm really happy about what we see. And hopefully the bottom side is just as good and our, our crunchy cylinder shouldn't be a problem.